She's missing a lot of gear, actually. Hi, I'm Mike Massimino. I'm a former NASA astronaut. Got to fly in space a couple times and do some spacewalks. I am currently an engineering professor at Columbia University, and I'm here to talk about space movies. When she took the spacesuit off, she was wearing a pair of shorts and a tank top. What we're wearing underneath the suit, you're wearing a variety of things. So you start off with a diaper, because there's no bathroom inside of the spacesuit, and you're going to be inside of there for quite a long time. And then you put a polypropylene underwear to absorb your sweat. And then you put on a liquid cooling and ventilation garment, LCVG, so you have a temperature control. And that also helps with ventilation. It has uh, hoses that sucks in air. Uh, and the air then goes uh, to a carbon dioxide filter and then gets returned over your head through the, through a vent in the helmet. So, so she's missing a lot of stuff. Overall with Apollo 13, that is, in my opinion, the most accurate of all the space movies. Whoa. And I think they caught not only the details of the event, but also the, the way that Mission Control Center works. Uh, say again, please. Houston, we have a problem. They found out that even though the tank was cleared, that there were some things that happened to it while it was still in the factory in the plant that uh, set it up for a problem when it got to orbit. As soon as they sent that signal to it to, to stir the tank, it created a, a, a spark, therefore an explosion. They leaked out a lot of their oxygen, blew a whole panel off. So that was depicted, I think, very well. Dr. Mann, listen to me. This is not about my life or Cooper's life. This is about all mankind. There is a moment. Sound can travel through the, through the atmosphere. That's how we hear each other. That's how we hear things. But you can bang all you want right outside of you know, where you are, whatever you're working on, and that sound will not travel to you uh, through the air because there's no air as you're in a vacuum so well I think what they showed in that movie as soon as the explosion happened and, the, and that astronaut was outside you heard silence so that's that's probably right he wouldn't be hearing any of that that big boom that that, that sound would not travel <laughs> Our bodies need some pressure around them, atmospheric pressure, in order to survive. But the key there is that you need to be exhaling if you get caught in a vacuum because if you're inhaling or if you hold your breath, what will happen is the air inside of your lungs will, uh, will expand under the, the low pressure and they can damage your lungs and you'll die that way. So as far as this explosion, like the head exploding and the eyeballs and all that sort of stuff, that's probably a little, a little far-fetched. The limited data that we have shows that that would not be the case. But again, don't try that at home. If you're in a vacuum, keep your spacesuit on. The Martian was is an interesting movie because we didn't get to Mars yet, but it was based uh, on fact. Growing food on Mars is, is possible. We're doing experiments of growing food now on the space station. It's not as easy as growing food here. You know, soil's different. You would need the right nutrients. Water is not going to be plentiful like it is here, but there are ways we can still grow plants without as many resources as we'd like. We do not have the technology to travel at light speed. We have been somewhat in the same place propulsion-wise for a while. We first started moving around in the air with propellers, and then we went to jets after World War II, and then we went to rocket, but we haven't found that next great breakthrough in transportation that would allow us to travel great distances very quickly.
when you're in a zero gravity environment like they were in the movie Passengers, the only force that's acting on the water is the surface tension between the molecules. They attract each other and they do kind of act like a blob. You can very carefully play with water in space. You gotta be careful because if it hits something, it will splatter. So I thought they did a pretty good depiction of what would happen with the loss of gravity with a lot of water. In order to go to orbit, you need 17,500 miles an hour worth of speed, to, that's orbital speed. To go to the moon, you need more than that. So we launch with, with big giant rockets, and there's really two ways actually to launch something into space. One is what we see conventionally, we're going from a launch pad up, right? And there are rockets that can be launched from airplanes. But that's the way we get things into space, traditionally from a launch pad, not from a cannon. Rocket. It's like no cheese I've ever tasted. No, the moon's not made of cheese. They brought back a lot of rocks, but no cheese. So you can't eat any of that stuff. As far as we know, there's no organic material. That's one small step for man. One giant leap for mankind. That sequence was very accurate. That's, uh, you know, we have a pretty good record of it, actually. It's kind of grainy old footage, but that's what he said, and he took that first step and put that imprint on the moon like they did. They're still there. All those footprints are still there. My overall requirement for all space movies is that the astronaut looks cool. All right, if the astronaut is cool, I am okay with the movie. I really don't care about accuracy. In fact, I'd almost rather them ever on the side of making the astronauts even more cool than they are, even though that's very inaccurate, obviously, right? So as long as the astronaut looks cool, I'm happy. I think that they're very inspirational. I think they're beautifully shot, uh, some from imagination of what it would look like, some from actual uh, images of what it's like, and I thank the people for making them.